All right. All right. So we're recording. Uh, so guys, this is Mark along with Nick and Mike. Uh, this is the first along the lines of the get to know your new breed training center black belts. So, uh, you know, I thought it fitting that we start off with the Sun Brothers because we know you guys the longest and stuff. And plus, Nick Sims, if you guys don't know, is the first of my black belts, technically speaking, first of our black belts. So he's, not, he's numero uno. So a little quick background. We've got Nick Sim over there. Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. So that's up, Nick obviously, uh, and obviously Mike's in. So for some of the students, uh, they're twins. Hello. <laughs> in case you didn't know, someone did actually ask me before uh, like if you guys were twins or not and stuff like that. They didn't oh, know. We get it all the time. We get it all the time. People, are, you know, are you related? So, yeah, <laughs> not at all. Not yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at all. Not at all. So first off, they are twins. Uh, Nick is a second degree of black belt. Again, he's uh, my first black belt, uh, yeah. along with Danny, along with Danny Medell. Nick is a second degree of black belt. Got his black belt in November of 2012. Mike Sim is a first degree. Going to get your second degree at the end of the year. Uh, assuming they're still jujitsu, <laughs> no, but like, yeah, I know, right? I know, I know. I'm, yeah. I'm just but there will be. But anyways, yes. Uh, so Nick, uh, Mike, rather, is a second degree, black, second degree black belt. Nick uh, is one of the owners of Chicago School of Grappling, and Mike is uh, runs the jujitsu program at Maximus uh, Training Center. So Maximus uh, Jujitsu, for lack of better terms, Maximus Muay Thai. So um, yeah, I've known these guys the longest. Uh, fun little fact before I let those guys kind of go into a little bit of the background is. Uh, my younger brother, who I actually started New Breed Training Center, uh, New, as New Breed Academy Chicago, uh, was wow. their childhood a childhood buddy. They went to school together at uh, Thomas Edison Elementary School, That's and cool. also I think Lincoln Junior High. And yeah, we did. West. And yeah, yeah, one year, one year in Oz West. Yeah, one year in Oz West. So, um, guys, just uh, let me turn the floor over to you guys first. Uh, Tell us a little something about yourself, so Nick and Mike. Hello. Um, <laughs> all right. I uh, the first time I ever did jujitsu was actually with your brother in 1995. I wrestled in high school. I grew up wrestling. I started wrestling in high school. Mm. Uh, fun fact: I played basketball for five weeks, saw one wrestling match, and I quit I that night and uh, went and joined yeah. wrestling. Um, I um, and 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 even funnier story is the first day I joined wrestling. Um, I had a wrestling match that day against Evanston. Um, I ended up winning in like a, a perfect plex position for those <laughs> WWF fans, uh, those 90 WWF fans. So it was kind of, <laughs> kind of cool. Um, but uh, first time I ever rolled was, uh, like I was saying, with Miles uh, at a Kai training hall on Oakton when they were, Rick Sala was teaching uh, on Oakton. For those students that don't know, uh, Mark's younger brother and Mark's older brother uh, Miles and Mike are, are are both very proficient in Muay Thai and started training in in the early 90s. And uh, um, when Miles he popped back in, I had to have been sophomore yeah. year. So uh, yeah, 95. So I think it was our sophomore year. He popped in through the summer, and uh, um, he's, he's like, "Hey, you wrestle?" And uh, I was like, "Yeah." So he's like, "You want to come to Kai and do some jujitsu with me?" And I was like. I had no idea what it was, but uh, I went there and I did some wrestling and uh, he did some jiu-jitsu on me. Um, fast forward 10 years, I'm in the military, I'm overseas, and uh, my brother is back here in, uh, in, in Illinois and he's like, hey, I ran into Mark Vives. He's uh, teaching Brazilian jiu-jitsu in Evanston. And right away I was like, dude, go fucking train, excuse me, go train, go do it right now. And, uh, uh, and he didn't, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I finished my deployment. I come back. I got back in April of 2005. I started training in August of 2005 and, uh, about six months later, Mike started training, but, uh, yeah. And the rest is, the rest is history. I've been training, uh, ever since we were a bunch of meatheads when I started Mark, I think was a fresh purple belt. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I fought in 2006. I fought in May in 2006. Mark was fighting. Cyril Chen was fighting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, and here we are. It's, oh my God, 2020 and, uh, we're still getting after it, you know, yeah. or hopefully after all this Corona. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Still getting after it. Mike, how about you, man? A little background. You want to give a, give the fans, the adoring, our adoring public, a little bit of a background? Like he said, you know, I mean, it was, uh, 
I was, you know, I, we were always, we've always been athletic. I stayed with basketball, whatever, but like after like early twenties, I started playing soccer again and uh, soccer and softball turned into softball. And uh, that's when I ran into you. And I remember I dude, just vivid as, vivid as hell, man. Cause I, I, I just turned, I looked, I was at Mather. Right. Right. And I was like, dude, is that miles? Like, I was like, dude, there's no way. I was like, Miles is definitely not Chicago. Like, I was like, there's no, why am I seeing Miles? And then sure enough, you're like, dude, we just moved back. And I was like, oh, shit. And like Nick said, I, I proceeded to spend the next year coming up with every excuse to not train. Um, but, you know, February 06, um, you know, I came in. I was one Saturday or Sunday, whatever. And you and Quan and Cyril and Chong and. And yes, the rest of the yash, you guys just all beat the shit out of me. And I was like, what the, what is this? You know, like stronger than you guys. Like I'm athletic. Like I was, you know, I could keep up with you guys. Like, but man, it was, it was magic and, and hooked instantly. You know, I, I, I told my, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, I was like, and she was constantly giving me crap about where are you playing today? You know, again, it's seven days a week. I was, I was pretty active, you know, playing in a league here or there, wherever, you know, indoor or outdoor. And um, within two weeks of that, I told all my teams, I was like, I'm done after the end of this session, whatever it was a couple of weeks out. And I was like, I'm just going to do jujitsu. And I told Lisa, I was like, you can never complain. She's still coming. Complaints. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's jujitsu. So I love it. Yeah, that's hilarious. So uh, the fun fact there with Mike Sim is that uh, we played in a Filipino softball league. Mm-hmm. It was basically all Filipinos, uh, except we were all allowed one import, one non-Filipino, a yeah, couple imports, yeah. like one or two. One, or two. And I one, think, one import. I think it was one. I think they upped it like when numbers started to get bad the last couple of years. But it was funny. Yeah. They were always like, whenever I came up to bat, they were always like, import, import. And I was like, uh, I, I'm one of you guys. But like, I get it, <laughs> you know? Uh, so. Yeah, so the people don't know, me and Mike are actually half Filipino. Our yes. mom was Filipino. Uh, funny enough, I played in a Filipino volleyball league with some friends, and uh, they made me bring in my birth certificate to prove that <laughs> I, I was remember actually that. Filipino. So. Remember that. Yeah. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, so, I mean, it, that, that, that was hilarious. So, so Mike's team was the Hitmen, and we were the Scorpions. I still have my jersey, man. It's like really I got them. So like, it was such a big deal, big ordeal trying to get like uniforms and shit like that and stuff like that. Try to like organize, hey, what colors do you guys want? All that exactly. stuff like that. Oh, oh, it was man. such a huge ordeal. And I, uh, good, times. good times. Yeah, good times. Good times. Other fun facts. Uh, Nick Sim has not one, but two 300 bowling games. Is that correct? No, just one. Two? Is it one? I thought it was two. Just one. No, yeah. I, when I was... Uh... In former life, when I was 20 years old, I, 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 was, uh, I grew up bowling and I would bowl with my mom and uh, I bowled in a league with her and I got the ring and everything. I don't know where it is, but uh, oh. I got a ring around here somewhere for a 300 well, game. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're the only guy in jiu-jitsu, at least for sure. The Chicago <laughs> way, 300, 300 games. So, uh, but uh, for you guys, like when you guys first started jiu-jitsu, um, well, Nick is probably a little bit easier because with the wrestling background. When you guys first started jujitsu, what was like the hardest part about starting Brazilian jujitsu? Oh, man, I, I don't know. If, I, I think wrestling helped me to to an extent in that I, I I knew that there would be pressure and there would be somebody coming at me, and I knew how to kind of uh, deal with that mentally. But the reality is, is like Mike was uh, saying earlier, um, when I started, I was. Um, I think I was like around 225 pounds. I was Mm. kind of out of shape, kind of in shape, you know, but clearly bigger than all of you guys. And uh, I'll never forget Chong, little, little Chong, who was maybe 140 pounds, just choked me over and over and over. And I think he had two stripes on his white belt, but he just kept choking me. And I was just like, dude, what is going on right now? Um, But uh yeah, so I think it, the wrestling, I think, helped my learning curve. But, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's no secret to this. You just got to get on the mats, right? It's put the time in on the mats. And, and uh, as long as you come in with an open mind and an open heart, you'll, you'll eventually get there. Yeah. How about you, Mike? What was the hardest um, thing? So I, what I very vividly remember when we started was in Evanston. Again, like Nick said, kind of in shape, kind of out of shape. I was that same – Pudgy to whatever, 30, 220 something, right? Um, and 
smoking cigarettes, living a really shitty lifestyle, <laughs> yeah. you know? You know right. what I mean? Just just complete assholes. And put it, you know, playing softball in a 20-year-old league, like, fucking, pardon my French, you can do that, right? Like, that's not a big deal. Like, you know, I, I very clearly remember going to some softball games and guys were literally having beers in the dugouts. Um, and then going up there and whatever, going for three for three for the day. But uh, breathing, understanding, and being able to, like, manage that portion of it because – us as black belts, right? Like for us, it's completely it's not even a thought, right? Like we, we are calm and we, we understand how to control our breath and we can take, even when we've been out for it, Rona is going to be the best thing because all the like, even our good blue belts and even maybe some purple belts, right? Like new fresh purple belts, they're going to come back and their gas tanks are going to suck. Even if they've been keeping up with it, right? We know like jujitsu rolling and jujitsu gas tanks, a little bit different, like higher belts are going to be able to calm right back into it and like ease the body on oh, we're just gonna be a little sore you know maybe a little timing but like we're not gonna gas right these guys are gonna be dying after the like third round like i don't know about you guys but like when i go back like my first couple classes open mats let's just roll like everyone just get it out of your system oh. just roll for like the first week or two and and then we'll get back to technique you know what i mean just get rounds in because that's all we're craving right now um, well, I'll, I'll tell you right now, the very second we get cleared, uh, the very second we get cleared, whatever date that is, monster 12, open man. Everyone 12, 12, 12 01 a.m. open man. It's <laughs> nice, going to last for about, it's going to last for like about 25 minutes. Cause everyone, except the black belts, the black belts will be the only yeah. ones like, because yeah. again, we'll be able yeah, to understand nah, and control our breathing. Myself. We'll still be tired. <laughs> For sure. uh, but yeah, that hilarious. was the biggest thing for me in the beginning. No, man, a hundred percent. And it's funny too because you still get the people, and you know, since all three of us are school owners, uh, like all three of us are school owners, we still get the people who'll sit there and hit us up and be like, "Hey, man, that first day of jujitsu was really tough and stuff like that." So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit there and go to export and run on the treadmill yeah. Yeah. and hit the. I'm pool. gonna get in shape for jujitsu. Yeah, I'm gonna get in shape, and I'm gonna get shape. I'll be back in like two, three months, and I'll get yeah. going. Then they realize. It doesn't. They never come back. Yeah, they never come back. Yeah, yeah, they never come back. It always cracks me up. But, uh, but like the, one of the other things that people probably don't know about you, and really for sure at, at you be at my school, you be training, sir, uh, is uh, that you guys are refs. That you guys uh, ref MMA. You guys ref Muay Thai. Uh, you guys are both professional refs, like professionally licensed now. I think yes, no, no. Not this I, guy. I that guy is. <laughs> but uh, but what's wrong, like, Nick? how'd you guys? <laughs> How'd you guys get into that? What's more that? or less and stuff like that. How'd you guys get into it? Uh, like so, uh, I, I think going to jujitsu tournaments and just seeing how uh, how how, how garbage bad roughing there yeah there could be out there. Um, and it was actually uh, Goat Fury Andrew Smith out on the mm -hmm. East Coast from BJJ Rev when we used to be part of them. Um, he used to run U.S. Grappling. He used to come through. Illinois um, and he was looking for refs and 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 so we went and and we did his four-hour course um, and then uh, we started roughing there and uh, it just it kind of grew from there um, I, I I fought MMA a few times and then um, saw just how some of that was um, again the same thing this is you know it's all early on 2005 six seven um, you know, so it's just the knowledge wasn't out there for the officials, you know, um, there weren't competent officials and uh, I felt that I could do a better job. So um, kind of dove into that. Um, and then I've been roughing MMA Muay Thai now since 2014, shortly after I started doing it, brought my brother on um, and uh, Mike's been doing jujitsu ever since, you know, so or since early on, Mike's been doing jujitsu. He still continues to do it. Um, I don't, I've kind of backed away from jujitsu. It's just long days that I just, I have no desire to do that. You know, if I'm coaching, that's one thing. Um, but, uh, to be there as a ref, you know, it's just, it's brutal. And then I will say this, I don't know if this is ever going to go out to, to the promoters of these events, but a really big turnoff for me is that, um, I've been around this country and I'm a fat guy and we have good pizza in Illinois. Okay. <laughs> and uh, these promoters come to Chicago and they, and they give us little Caesars and Domino's. <laughs> what the <laughs> F are you doing? Stop doing that. I don't want yeah. to eat that. If I'm going to work eight hours for you on my feet, 
I don't want Domino's. You could spend more than twenty dollars yeah. for lunch. Get like, me a good pizza. Come on, man. <laughs> so, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of kind of how it's gone, and uh, you know. So now I just I I, I kind of stick to MMA and and Muay Thai, and I, I like that. I like them. I like it more. So more I get. So uh, well, that kind of leads on to like my ne- my next question. What's like the What's the most – well, so Mike, since you basically still ref uh, jiu-jitsu as well, too, you have, like, the extra option. But what's the most yeah. fun thing for you guys to ref? The most fun thing. The most things that you're just like, oh, man, I really want to – I love refing Muay Thai. I love refing MMA and stuff so, like that. So striking game, right, the, the Muay Thai and the MMA is obviously way more fun than jiu-jitsu. It can be. And, and let, let's be realistic. And even still, like – I. I we all peruse Facebook right during this quarantine, right? Like, I keep seeing uh, Ivy Jenner post all these, like, black belt matches and stuff like that. It's like, how about this? Get me pans, purple belt, middleweight, and show me that division, like, for the last decade. Like, we want to see some fire jujitsu. That's where we'll see it. That's where we'll see, you know, guys that, that uh, like, are really getting after it. Where You know, and it's not to say that you're gonna, not going to get those at black belt. Just the vast majority of black belt matches are, are pretty bad. Stop, dude. Um, and so striking is always obviously going to be a little more uh, higher tempo. Mm-hmm. And guys, you know, you can see knockout. Your mic's off. Sorry. Yeah, mic's off. Uh, apologies, guys. That's Isaac, the, the, <laughs> the tornado. But anyway, um, striking. Sorry. Knockouts. That's fun, right? I like all that stuff. Is there's just way less like downtime in the fights. Um, but again, there there have been great jujitsu matches that I've watched. There have been great jujitsu and MMA matches and stuff like that. Muay Thai is fun because it's just straight striking. Like, you know, Nick's Nick's doing some work to try to get elbows here for Amis. So I I don't do pros, right? I've never like toyed with it and talked with the lady Nancy over at the state and stuff like that, but. The way it is, the number of shows, like, the, she's already got a roster, and, you know, Nick struggled and had a rough time trying to just deal with all the bureaucracy of all of it, and I don't want, I don't want to do any of that. Like, listen, I'm going to show up, hang out with my, my coworkers that I enjoy hanging out with and uh, work in a cool show and watch some, some good fights, you know, and officiate and do it, you know, better than others can. Why? Because, you know, we've been around the block. We've been, we've been training for a while, um, but, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, guys punching and kicking each other is way more fun than jujitsu. But jujitsu still fun. Can be, can be, can you know, be. Sometimes, sometimes we get these, uh, especially in these Muay Thai events, kickboxing events, where um, you have. Um, so there's there's levels to this shit. It's not even it's there's levels to it, right? It's a hundred and fifteen pound person just is not going to generate as much power as a two hundred and five pound person. It's just they're just not. Right. So when you put headgear on a 115 pound person and then shin guards on that same person, they're just they're, no one's getting knocked out. Um, and then if they're hesitant to fight, maybe it's their first fight or their second fight, you know. So some of those fights can 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 drag, um, you know, they go all three rounds and, um, you know, they can be just they, they can be even more boring than than jujitsu, um, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean. Good, exciting fight. It's a good, exciting fight, and I like being there for it. <laughs> now, for, for, for me, I think the most fun uh, – I don't ref. I mean, I, do, I, I ref IBJJF stuff and some local stuff sometimes. Uh, not really anywhere, but only IBJJF. But uh, if, if I were to, like, basically, like, ref and also Muay Thai and MMA and stuff like that, I would actually love – the thing is that I don't think I could contain my poker face, my referee poker face, <laughs> but I would absolutely love – to ref amateur MMA. I think just the amount of just crazy stuff mm. that like mm. we used to see, especially back in the day. Oh, just <laughs> brutal, brutal stuff. Back in the day, brutal. Mark, still happens today, man. Still happens uh, today, uh, man. That's 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 There's stuff, man. You just, you're just like, okay. Now, I think you guys told me a story. Was that a couple, was it last year or something like that? About the person who like read, who's in the ring, walked in there with like basketball shorts and stuff like that. Then the other person walked in, started pounding the mat, said like, I'm going to fight that guy. And then just started like, went on the mat, tapped it and like walked Dude, out. Something like funny that. Funny enough, funny, it was females. Yes. And uh, it was two females. And it happened to me. I was a ref. And I have to tell this story because it's pretty entertaining. Um, so before, before all that happens, so when, fighter comes in the cage they go to their corner i say 
go to the rules. Do you have any questions? No, listen for my commands. Good luck, fight hard. And uh, I, I turned to walk away and she goes, hey, ref, ref. I was like, yes. She's like, what happens if I get tired? I was like, what? <laughs> what? What do you mean? She's like, if I get tired, what happens? I said, what, what does this even mean? And she's like, I smoke. Like in real life, I smoke. And I was like, what? And my brother's outside the cage and I'm looking at him and I'm like, dude, I'm checking the next, I'm checking the next fighter. I'm like, is this really happening? I was like, and uh, I was like, I'm like tap and I'll stop the fight. And uh, it it was great. And uh, so while I'm having this conversation with her, the other, the other fighter comes in the cage and she lets out a big roar as soon as she gets in the cage. And then that first fighter looks at me and goes, ref, I'm not fighting her. And then walk out of the cage. And I was just like, whoa. And that was the fight. It was, uh, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> TKO. Uh, yeah, you win. By Rar. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. TKO by intimidation. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, one of, the, one of the cool things that we did, like, and not a lot of people are like, oh, gosh, like, our, our, guy, our, comp- our, our students, uh, especially our competitors, are spoiled as hell. Like most tournaments now, they're pretty organized. They got smooth comp. You got your IBJJF stuff and everything like that. For me, one of the, one of the coolest moments, or one of the fun, most fun times is when we do the Nagas, like up in Milwaukee, and spend all day there. Ugh. Like all day there, way in the morning. And Henry like, Metamoros' tournament. <laughs> Henry Metamoros. Henry, Henry Metamoros uh, is a uh, former Wisconsin Milwaukee black belt. Uh, Milwaukee Wisconsin black belt. Uh, had a had a was basically one of the first original big names up in Milwaukee, and he ran a tournament. I forget exactly what it was, and it was hilarious because literally he was making brackets and randomized weight classes. It'd be like, okay, 148.2 to 166. <laughs> Uh, three like, over there, Matt one, and it was hol- it was just the worst. No. It was it was the best. So it was Quan just, just, just running around with his freaking cheeseburgers the whole time. Yes. Oh yeah, it was just hilarious. It was just hilarious and stuff like that. But like for me, it was just like all that, all those like all day tournaments and stuff. It was it was funny because we did in fact black out the whole day and just walk up there and stuff. Had like that. to, had to, and it was just a like, good old time and stuff. And I, I'm very happy that I personally never have to sit there and go through anything like that ever again. I'm sure our students, our students will never know the pain, no. but uh, you know, like, you know, like for me, like I do miss that. Um, you guys used to compete a lot. Well, Mike Sam, you still compete on the, the pro shows and stuff like that. Yeah. A little bit here uh, and there, you know, on fight to wins. Yeah. And I, and I, and like a lot of people, I, I still say this to this day, Nick Sim is one of the best kept jujitsu secrets period and stuff like period. that. Like he, period. Has if jujitsu secrets in if uh, well definitely Chicago, Midwest, and if not nationally and stuff. And uh are there any plan uh, plans for your for for Nick for you to just come back and competing in general or uh Mike Sim for you to sit there and get hit the tournament scene at the tournament but, scene. I, I don't I don't know if I I don't know if I'll come back. You know I'll I'll never say never but uh I think to compete there there's I'm missing the biggest factor to compete and that's desire you know and uh like we were just talking about these all-day events like that really you know left a a bad mark on me and i just you know i i wrestled and you know wrestling tournaments were all day there were sometimes three-day tournaments and uh you know like it's just the inefficiency kills me you know and then it's like you go out there and I don't know, I, I can make excuses all day. I just, at the end of the day, I, I don't know if I have the desire to do it. You know, it's, uh, um, I, I'd have better things to do on a Saturday than go, uh, spend, uh, you know, all day at a, at a tournament. No, I hear you. How about you, Mike? You know, I, so the last two fight to wins, actually, I was like, I been telling my guys, my team, I was like, I'm done. Like, Hanging it up, dude. Nick and I, uh, we turned 41 here coming up in a, in a, in a couple of days. Um, yeah. So, yeah, exactly, you know. And, and, and even still, like, you're older than us, so, like, you, you get it, though. But, like, you know, with the, with the little ones, you know, just keeping up with them, you know, they're, they're starting to come of age. My uh, – got a four and a six that are soon going to be five and seven. But just more and more stuff that's going to, you know, like, require their time. So, like Nick said, like, the desire to – 
to be in shape to compete and do that stuff, right? Do I have that? Because just doing that alone is taking on a lot, you know? So it's like, if I'm going to go do tournaments, like, I'd want to make sure I'm doing a tournament, like, healthy, the right way, clean, and, like, with the purpose of going out there, smashing everyone and finishing first. Um, you know, if I just want to, you know, test myself, do a match, like, fight, that's what fight to win is awesome. Because, like, it's one seven-minute match. Like, I, I don't... I don't want to say I don't care how out of shape I get, but like, you know, I've, and I face some killers, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, y- y- I think I can, you know, put a good fight with them, with anyone for seven minutes, you know, even if I get out of shape. So, and yes, Mark, to, 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 to what you were saying with how good Nick is, absolutely. Every single guy I went with, like, rolling with those guys and rolling with Nick, it's not even close. Like, Nick murders me every time I roll with him. So. But it's not as it's not even close. Like people don't people don't understand. They don't know. They don't like, know. Yeah, P- people don't know unless they actually roll with Nick. It's like, uh, and people have seen. You guys are too uh, kind. No, it's it's true though. I've, my, one of my one of the one of the coolest things that people have always come and sat there and told me is uh, Nick when used to when, when um used to sit there and come to open mats often on Saturdays, and the mats would just clear because and when I when I didn't run a timer, the mats would just clear and we would just basically go until we just couldn't go anymore. And we would just be like, just on the thing. We're just looking at each other like, good roll, good roll. And it, was, and it was funny because we tried to kill each other. Like, we tried to kill each other. Like, we're murdering each other. And admittedly, Nick, more often than not, gets the majority off, like, gets the majority off on me and stuff. Like, and it, like, it beats the crap out of me. And I'm, I love it. I love it to death. I love the fight. I'm also psychotic, too, which is why I still can be. <laughs> that. So, I like, you know. So, I mean, again, really good to be a Gemini and have the, Oh, nice Mark side. And the <laughs> completely bipolar side and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, nah, but like, it's hopefully, hopefully you guys like sit there and have a chance to compete some more because you guys are too good to like not compete. But if you guys don't, no, no problem. Stuff like that. It's like, it's, I, we all play our parts and we're all, we're all leaders of the team now and stuff. And it, it's, it's, it's such a great, it's, it's a great feeling and stuff. And we've gone through a lot. Like, man, we've gone through a lot and grown a lot indiv- individually and together, I mean, we've seen it all. We've we've seen between the three of us, we definitely yeah. have seen, we've seen yeah. a lot of dumb, crazy stuff. So that being said, for the both of you, what's your favorite Evanston-related story? Man, Evanston-related there's story. A, there's a bunch. I can think of a couple. I just mm-hmm. like I like I know you guys probably have like your own little like favorites and stuff like that. I so for those that don't know, Evanston. I think the little room was what, maybe 400 square feet. Then we had the cage on the outside of it. And we were on the interior of Altfit, right? How big was it? Yes. Uh, so it's, so Altfit, when we first started up at Altfit, we had the yoga area. We had that yeah, little you were out front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were out in front. We had a total of 240 square feet of mat. That's it. And then they moved us to the back. Uh, and we had, uh, it was about 700, 750 something. It was like 700 square feet of mat, basically a little bit more than that. Is that before they took out the little room or after? Uh, even with that little room didn't really add that much. They added almost nothing. Yeah, it was a, yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah. a closet. And like, so they yeah. gave us an extra closet worth of stuff and it, yeah, but it, it didn't really, we didn't really have that much in like, you know, but, in terms of square footage. Like but I, th- so, but I think the, <laughs> the, the funniest time of training there was again this is interior and it's a gym and most gyms don't turn on air conditioning during the summers and uh it was just always it was like four million degrees in there and then it wasn't literally until like the last couple of months that we were leaving you're like oh wait there's an air conditioning in here yeah and you're like, wait we could turn the air conditioning on oh yeah. i was so mad i was so yeah hot. yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and geese, geese weren't out. super extra lightweights like they are nowadays, right? Like wow. back then, we had you know like three brands, four brands, and they were all super heavy. So well, yeah, every like that's why you got the five point five pound allowance in the IBJJF because they all weighed five and a half pounds. Yeah. They're not they're not, yeah. they're not two and a half pounds. That that three pounds makes a huge difference. It's not very huge breathable difference. and stuff. How about you, Mike? What's your favorite? Uh, Man, story? you know, just by it. So. That story of Nick's, you know, finding out that we had the AC, um, you know, the, the visitors, we had a ton of visitors come through. That was always cool. Um, but all the guys, you know, like the OGs that, that are still training, like, um, I know, you know, like a lot of these old, old gyms that have been around for, you know, the last decade and a half here, um, you know, they have their, their crew, but, you know, I don't know how true to, true to their crew it is as, as ours is, but, uh, 
Like, it's pretty awesome seeing everyone together. Like you said, like, we may not be on the mats every, every night of the week like we used to, but we're all still training, you know. Even seeing guys, you know, like, from our Skokie days, you know, we seen Durkee, like, guys like that, you know what I mean? Like, um, it's a big, big Tony or whatever the guy's name was, that big, big bushy hair that moved down to Texas or whatever. I don't know, just, like, all these guys. Jamie, Jaime, like, I mean, just seeing all these, like, old school guys that are still, like, training, like, to me, that's, like, awesome, like. That's that's what's up, you know. So that's what I miss, and that's what I love the most about Evanston. Yeah. How about Skokie? Any any favorite stories from Skokie? Uh, Skokie. The window punch. What's that? The window punch. Quan's window punch. I missed that. Uh, I oh, it. oh, the window I punch. Oh. Yes. And with Vinny, I don't know if this thing's gonna work. Yeah. This is gonna go. So, it is now. so we. Uh, so for everyone who doesn't know, we used to sit there and just do like weird crazy boxing matches too at the end of open mats <laughs> in Skokie when we were oh, at the and and uh <coughs> and Vinny who's eventually going to be on here uh Vinny fa- like you know fancied himself a boxer had a good right hand and stuff and so you know he's just like Quan Quan so Quan Wang was uh one of the original what one of the original just one of the founders of New Breed Academy uh, all the way back in Amsterdam back in November of 04 so Vinny goes like, hey, put on the gloves, put on the headgear, let's box. Quan's never boxed in his life. Like, he did an MMA fight, but he's never really actually, like, taken up boxing. So, <laughs> goes there, they're just like this, they're just like this, you're just, like, just feeling each other out. And out of nowhere, Quan just ducks like this and throws the <laughs> biggest thing like that. Yeah. Stuns, nails Vinny, stuns him, he's just staggered like this. Everyone's dying. Vinny's ready to go down. And, yeah, that was just... <laughs> It was, oh and it's, it, was on, it was on YouTube for a little bit. And I think Quan uploaded it. And I think he took it down because he went to law school. Obviously, you don't want to put that up. <laughs> but, but I'm pretty sure it, 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 but it was on YouTube for a long time. Yeah, the uh, Chinese window was awesome. Yeah. Nick, what's your favorite Skokie story? Uh, Vinny, I love you, brother, when this comes out. This is uh, mine, too. This is mine, too. I was going to bring it up if you didn't. It, it was... <laughs> So you can look this up, and I actually think uh, it's it's Johnny Ramirez and Leo Zinho, right? In uh, in Santa Fe uh, Springs, I, Le- Leo Zinho and Galvao. Leo Zinho oh, and Galvao. Right. Is it is it a New Breed Santa Fe Springs? Though? Yes, New Breed yes, Santa Fe Springs. Right. Okay, okay, yep. okay. Yeah. So, uh, but but look it up. They are passing back and forth. A uh, what is it called? Yoga ball. Uh, yoga, yoga, yoga ball. The ball. stability balls. <laughs> yeah, and and. And they're jumping on it and balancing on it. And it's very, very impressive. And uh, it was a Saturday after open mat. And, and Vinny thought he was Andre Galvao. And, <laughs> and he jumped on it and then went ass over elbows. And it was, uh, it was awesome. glorious. <laughs> glorious. So uh, the, way, the way that I, that I heard the story was because I believe Yashua was there. <coughs> Yashua and, and Quan were both there. So... They called me up. I was and he, there for this. Yeah, well, yeah, you were there. You were yeah, there. I was there. I saw it. Because you, you were like right next to him when he apparently oh, did it. And stuff it like was that. amazing. So he flips over, knocks himself out. And what, <laughs> even Vinny sat there and said like the first thing that he saw when he kind of came to was you standing over him like, <laughs> like, like just laughing at him like that. Uh, that that's that's odd. I wasn't there for it, but man, I wish I had cameras oh, in there. My I wish God. I had recorded. It would be on YouTube and everything else. Oh, that would be man. viral for sure. Ten million oh. views. Hundred percent. We'd be we. That's close to retirement money right there. Just like <laughs> every so, like every so every so often, just keep re-uploading it and everything like that. But uh, you know, those are good times, man. And like like like, like we all touched on and stuff like that. And uh, I mentioned earlier, it's you know we're part of that OG crew, and it's really really fu- like you know really really fun and awesome to see how everyone kind of has grown through that and stuff. Um, Man, I was brought to tears when Nick pulled me aside. I remember that. Remember that? Like, it was like that one. It was like a summer night. You pulled me aside. You went outside. It's like, hey, I got to talk to you. I'm just like, look, I'm, I want to open up my own school. I've been thinking about opening up my own school. And I was just like, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to pull the trigger on it and stuff like that. And I was like, dude, go. I was like so happy. I'm like, I, like I'm so uh, – I'm really happy for that. You know, I, like, I want our guys to sit there and, you know, just be successful, grow, and – Keep, you know, like keep spreading what we do and what yeah, like, I appreciate like, that man that's, uh, that's what separates you from a lot of people you know it's, yeah. uh, you're, one, you're one of the few guys that uh, are, that stand behind your guys you know and, and, and get behind them when uh, you know it's just something like that makes sense for, for, for them so 
that's now, good for me at the time. Dude, you gave me, you got me my start. I mean, you know, my first coaching job, you got me. So, yeah, you know, I always stand behind each and every single one of us. And like, same thing, we all stand behind each other. So, yeah. you know, from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate it. Uh, like, you know, and so, well, let's start wrapping this up. So in closing, is there anything you guys want to share to any of the new breed training center students or any of your students or any of our affiliate students and stuff? This is going to go online. I'll be public. I'm not going to censor out any of the profanity. Screw it. It's all right. It's not a big deal. But, uh, any closing statements from you guys? Um, you know, to the newer people, there are no secrets, you know, stand the mat, stay humble, come with an open mind. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, get after it. You know, there's, uh, that's it. When, when, when things get tough, you just, you fight down in a mouthpiece and you just got to go forward. There's no, there's no other way. You know, I mean, look at the stuff we're dealing with right now. You know, it's got to make it through it. You know, fight down in a mouthpiece and go forward. Mike, how about you? Yeah, you know, similar to what, you know, tripping on what Nick's saying, you know, the, 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 there's no shortcut in jiu-jitsu. You got to show up every day. Unfortunately, we have to, you know, you can't do it alone. So, like, it takes a team. You know, something you said a long time ago to us, common throughout jiu-jitsu, like, training partners, your toys, don't break them. Um, you know, that type of whole thing. But, like, you know, one, my, my, mine's, like, the rule of one, like, one technique every day you come. Like, just one detail. I don't care if it's mine, one of my blue belts, someone in class who's higher ranked than you, lower ranked than you, shows you one detail. You learn one detail. Like, you register that in the bank, like, you're better. So every day, just make sure you're getting better. Keep the target three inches in front of your face. Aim center mass. Like make it easy. Um, you know, like it's it's a it's a marathon. Definitely not a sprint. That if you look at it as a sprint, like you're gonna burn out, and well, that'll be the end of it. So no, like I completely agree with you guys. Like and like I like it's funny because I can still I still to this day preach all that. Say, like I, I, ad nauseum every single day, every single day. Uh, so I'm going to kind of wrap everything up with uh, two, for lack of better terms, fun facts that, like, I have about YouTube and stuff like that. So my fun fact about Nick Sim, there's, like, three guys, three guys I've ever encountered on our team that if they ever sit me down, they got, like, that fatherly tone. And it's just like, and they said, like, Mark, you got a second? I'm like, oh, God damn it. Like, I know I'm going to that, stuff like that. 100%. Nick Sim, 100%. He's pulled me aside, I would probably say, three times. Three times. Like, two for sure. I think there's a third where you'd just be like, that's like, come here, come here. And that's the way you're sitting too. And I'm like, oh, it's like, it's like, you know, I'm like a little kid all over again, getting in trouble and stuff like that. That's my fun fact about Nick. When, when Nick sits there and gives me the, like the, uh, to catch a predator, have a seat thing. I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm, like I'm, I know I'm screwed. I'm, I'm dead. I got to listen and I got to do whatever he says. Uh, the other, like, my fun fact about Mike Sim is, you know, if you guys ever notice and stuff, like, so to my students, if you guys ever notice how messed up my teeth are, that's because Mike <laughs> Sim's ass has knocked out and chipped my teeth so many times. There was that stage in Evanston where all you did was play, like, Tornado Garden. In the tornado Garden, dude. I was freaking doing it. So I just watched that Mikey Musumeci on Flow interview, right? Yeah. <laughs> Matrix Guard, homie. I, I haven't been playing ass guards. I've been playing Matrix Guard since 2006. Yes. So what's up? Yes. What's up with all you newbies? Yeah, a ass and face guard. It's very dangerous. It's 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 gonna drive up your dental bill. That's like <laughs> you easily knocked out the most teeth, got chipped the most teeth in my mouth mm -hmm. out of anyone else. Hands down. I, could, I second that. Tore your knee. Remember, oh, you like, tore your knee in Skokie. Oh, yeah. Yes. But it was literally like we were just warming up, and I didn't even touch you. You just like sat up in my garden. You were like, "Oh my god, stop!" And I was like, "What? I didn't even touch you!" Like I was freaking out. You're like, "Dude, I know you didn't touch me," but I was like, "You were like, yeah, something just happened in my knee," and I was like, "Oh." No, remember, remember the old, like, well, there was, was the old wrestling mats and stuff like that. Like, we got caught in all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was like, that's that why I, bad. yeah, I never want to trade jiu-jitsu on wrestling mats ever again. It freaks me out. freaks me out. But, but guys, uh, thanks so much for your time. Uh, hope you guys had fun doing this and stuff. And, it was uh, fun. Yeah, so I'm going to stop. Right, guys, uh, hope you guys learned a little bit more about Mike and Nick Sim. Uh, again, Mike, uh, Mike runs Maximus uh, the Jiu-Jitsu program at, at Maximus uh, Muay Thai at Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, out in Roselle, and then uh, Nick Sim, Chicago School of mm -hmm. Grappling on Racine, right by U right off of UIC. Uh, to all the guys at New Breed Training Center, like you know, go visit those guys, man. Have fun. Come on by. Come Your on, family. train. Go and train. Always. We're all family. Obviously, all the guys at CSG and also at Maximus know they can stop by at New Breed Training Center anytime. We're all one big happy family. And to that, guys, uh, 
Thank you again for tuning in. Ooh, and, uh, I'm gonna hit the, hit the record, stop recording right about now.